If you love the Lord, give him praise like you're loving everybody. I said, if you love the Lord, give him praise like you're loving. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the many things that he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. We honor our Heavenly Father, His Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who hung for six hours one Friday and died until death died. Three days later, He got up out of the grave, not as a weakling, but with all power in His hands. Fifty days later, He sent the Holy Ghost to reside and to preside on the inside of us, and what a joy. It is for us to know that we're not just his creation, but we're his children. And after all that we've been through, we still have our right minds. For he will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on him. I want to give honor and deference to my big brother, a giant in the faith, a general in the faith, one whom I have had the honor and privilege of being exposed to his ministry many years ago in Detroit, the one and the only Bishop David Cooper. Come on, church. Come on, church. That's my God. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, when I got the call from him to come my spirit leaped because I'm honored uh, to have even been in his consideration. And uh, I want to thank God for him and for all of the hospitality and the accommodations that have been made for my time. This is my first time in the state of New Mexico, in the city of Albuquerque. And uh, it just seems right that the first time would be at the New Hope Full Gospel. Baptist Church. Let me say to this church, happy birthday. God be praised for 70 years. Come on, let's give God praise for that. 70 years of worship and witness for Jesus Christ in this community, and God has continued to take you from one level of glory to the next. And uh, we celebrate the leadership of Bishop Cooper, but we also celebrate the wonderful woman that stands by his side. Co-Pastor Cooper, come on, church, give God praise for her. No, y'all can do better than that. Come on, thank God for her. Amen. We praise God for her ministry and for her impact uh, as she stands and walks with her husband in this expression of the body of Christ. And I want to thank God for all of you uh, who are here today who thought it not robbery to still be at church on time. <laughs> We're time changing. Amen. We honor all of those that are part of this worship in the virtual sanctuary. And uh, to all of my Detroit people in the room, I say to you, what up, though? <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> Amen. Amen. If I could get a little bit more on the monitors here in the pulpit, that would be great. While you're standing, I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel that has been recorded by Matthew. Matthew chapter number eight. Matthew chapter eight. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of scripture beginning with verse number one. <clears throat> Matthew chapter eight, beginning with verse number one. Your Bible should read, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus says unto him, See, you tell no man, but go your way. 
show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. I want to tag this text, I got next. You may be seated in the Lord's church. It is Matthew's theme and thesis to present the Lord Jesus Christ as a chief politician. It is his prerogative to posture Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the one who has ultimate authority over the socioeconomic and physical well-being of those who are his citizens in his kingdom. Much of the language of Matthew's biography on Jesus is not so much ecclesiastical as it is political. And when we read Matthew's account of the Lord's life to this Jewish audience, he wants to make it clear that Jesus Christ was not just a religious personality that Jesus Christ has full authority over the whole man, over the whole well-being of man in the context of a king. As a matter of fact, when we read Matthew's biography on Jesus, we are most familiar with the Sermon on the Mount, but from a historical context, it was more so the political protocol of a king that made it very clear to us that as we submit to his kingship, there are benefits to submitting to his authority and that the Sermon on the Mount laid out the king's protocol of how he takes care of his citizens in our social context in this uh, democracy in which we live, it's not the case, but in the other parts of the world where a king is in, thor in authority, all of the citizens under his authority are taken care of by the king. All right. All right. That's why he says to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added. What things? What you're going to eat. What you're going to wear. How you're going to live. That's why those of us who are Jesus followers don't stress over what happens in the world. Because while we are in the world, the world does not have the final say so on our well-being. We are kingdom citizens, and when we seek the king's dominion, he takes care of what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, how we're going to survive. That's why we don't jump out of windows at every socioeconomic crisis, because God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. It's Matthew's theme and thesis to pitch and posture Jesus Christ as this chief politician who takes care of those who submit to his authority in his kingdom. And after he finishes laying out the protocol of the Beatitudes, which covers chapters 5, 6, and 7, if you have a real Bible, he concludes laying out that protocol and now shifts to coming out of the protocol. And the Bible says, according to Matthew's chronology, one approached him who had been excommunicated from the kingdom because of his condition. The text says he suffered from leprosy. The Bible calls him a leper. This was a signature sickness in scripture uh, because this sickness 
was unusually treated because it couldn't be treated. There was legislature about leprosy. Leprosy church was the generic term given to describe a multiplicity of skin disorders that manifested itself in raw flesh and spots on the skin and skin being scaly. It was so bad that leprosy basically uh, subjected the body to rot from the inside out and caused the skeletal system to break down and debilitate within the body because the flesh is literally being eaten away. In a, in a motley of manifestations. The problem with leprosy, y'all, is that there was no pharmaceutical or medical response for leprosy. As a matter of fact, when we read about leprosy, we never read about leprosy being cured or healed. We only read about leprosy being cleansed. Those who suffered from leprosy church did not have to go see physicians. They had to go see priests. And when they went to go see the priest, the reason being is because in biblical antiquity, the Jewish community considered leprosy to be the stroke of God or the finger of God, the bodily manifestation of sin's consequences in the body. Catch that church. They could not have a pharmaceutical or medicinal response to leprosy because that would suggest that there was some medicine to cure God's issues. Might I suggest to you that I want to aggravate you theologically and tell you uh, that when we study leprosy, church, here is the biggest problem with leprosy. It wasn't just the manifestation of illness in the body. The biggest problem with leprosy, Bishop, is that every patient that had leprosy got it from God. And what do you do when God makes you sick? Uh, numbers chapter 12. There's a little sister there by the name of Miriam who protested Moses' choice of wife. He chose a Nubian sister and she didn't approve of his choice of wife. So she literally tried to mount an insurrection and discredit his authority because she didn't like his choice of wife. And Numbers 12 says, and the Lord struck her with leprosy. Second Kings chapter 5, there's a brother there by the name of Gehazi who embezzled in the name of his master and got caught by it. And as a result, the Lord took leprosy that was on Naaman and put it on Gehazi. Second Chronicles chapter 26, there's a brother there who went in the temple, y'all, and when he went to church, the text says he was a politician by the name of Uzziah who went to church trying to be a preacher. The text says he went to church and offered burnt incense. The priest ran in and said, don't do it because you're a politician and not a preacher. <clears throat> But you presume just because you're a politician, you can have political authority in God's house. And 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verse 20 says, And the Lord struck him with leprosy, watch here, in the church. 
you, you, you missed it. Uh, 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 I need to pause parenthetically and tell you, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, it is hazardous to your health to call yourself doing something God didn't call you to do. You, you might want to stay in your lane and stop trying to covet somebody else's calling. It is hazardous to your health to try to do what God has not called you to do. We've got three cases of leprosy, church, and in all three cases, the patients got it from God. What medicine is there for God's sickness? What, what drug do you take for, for God's sickness? What prescription do you take from, from God's sickness. What doctor do you know has more information about how to cure God's wrath? Thus, thus leprosy church presents to us a problem and all they could do since they couldn't treat it, they had to raise a legislature about it. Leviticus 13, 45 and 46 says they had to have legislature about leprosy. Here's what they did. Once they uh, knew somebody had leprosy, they had to identify the leprosy and isolate the leper. They had to take them out of mainstream society and place them in these leprosariums, which was biblical antiquities equivalent of hospice, where they put them in these old school nursing homes to rot to death with others who suffered from what they suffered. They, they had to be taken out of their families, away from their jobs, away from their communities, away from their homes, and be put away they had to shave their heads bald they had to wear torn clothes and they had to have a sign on their chest that read unclean if they came within close proximity of anybody they had to shout unclean so that the person would stay away from them now if you heard anything of my little history lesson here on, on leprosy come back now to Matthew chapter 8. Here's what it says. And there came a leper. You missed it. Uh, he, the, he, he, he's a leper. His, his head is bald. His clothes are torn. He's got a sign on his chest that reads unclean. He has to shout unclean to anybody that he's coming in close proximity with. Verse 1 of of Matthew chapter 8 y'all is a snapshot and a summary of the entire ministry of Jesus here's what it says and when he had come down from a mountain multitudes followed him and there came a leper Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 is a summary and a snapshot of the entire ministry of Jesus Christ. Here it is again. And when he had come down from a mountain, there followed multitudes of him, and there came a leper. I'm going to try it again for this side. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 is a snapshot and a summary of the entire ministry of Jesus. I'm going to try it again. And when he had come down out of a high place, he encountered a man who had been living with the wrath of God. I'll try it again for these people here. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 is a snapshot and a summary of the entire ministry of Jesus. Here's how it reads. When he came down out of a high place, he encountered a man who had been living with the wrath of God. I take it you don't know how to get happy so let me shout myself ladies and gentlemen Matthew 8 and 1 pictures this the son of God came to earth to encounter a man living with the wrath of God cause the only medicine for the wrath of God is the son of God I thought I had somebody in here who liked Jesus on a Sunday morning because the truth of the matter is what do you do when God is your problem 
the only deliverance when God is your problem is the son of God let me mess with your theology ladies and gentlemen Jesus did not come to save you from the devil Jesus came to save you from God preach Tolan Morgan you got scripture against the devil you can praise against the devil you can fast against the devil but what scripture do you use when God is your problem what scripture do you tell God to leave me alone ladies and gentlemen the son of God came to save us from the wrath of God so that the children of God can become the sons of God and whenever somebody mentions Jesus name you shouldn't be sitting in church chilling like that section over there you need to be getting out of your seat and tell God thank you for sending Jesus because I had no recourse against the wrath of God thank God for the son of God because Jesus Save me from the wrath of God. I can't get no help here. Whenever somebody called Jesus' name, how dare you sit and chill? Like you don't have no reason to thank him because the son of God was your only rescue from the wrath of God. Matthew 8 and 1 church is a snapshot and a summary of the entire ministry of Jesus Christ. He came down from a high place to stand in between an angry God and his wrath on humanity and thus now you and I can appreciate this passage. Bishop, I, I, I believe if we stick to the text, the text knows how to preach itself. I don't have no cliches. All I got is points. Y'all ready? Here, here, here's point number one of the passage. Y'all ready? Here it is. And there came a leper. Okay. Uh, apparently y'all missed my little history lesson. He's a leper, which means he's been snatched out of his community. He has been taken out of his home, away from his family because his condition is both incurable and contagious and there is no medicinal nor pharmaceutical response to leprosy so he has been taken out of mainstream society and placed in this leprosarium to rot and die with people who are struggling with the same thing he's struggling with verse 1 says and there came you still missed it a leper oftentimes you miss the miracle reading the miracle <clears throat> because if he's got leprosy how did he get there he's been taken out of his mainstream society and placed in biblical antiquities version of hospice and the text is silent on how he got out we know who he got to but we don't know how he got out because ladies and gentlemen the real miracle for some of us is not who we got to but who we got away from preach Tolan Morgan because your life will never change until you get away from people who are as sick as you as crazy as you as messed up as you are the first part of your miracle is getting away from people who are as sick as you we're not clear we're clear who he got to but the real miracle is who he got away from. Lord have mercy today. That's God's word for somebody. Your condition will change contingent upon how you change your company. 
I feel like preaching in here. I said the change of your condition is contingent upon the change of your company. If you stay around people who are no better than you, messed up like you, think low, act low, you gonna stay low. But you gotta change your company. That's why church we see you in New Hope today but we don't know what you went through to get away from whatever you left this morning to walk in this church. That's why we ain't got time to play church because you don't know what people got away from just to walk in church. We don't have time to figure out your latest mess your latest social media mess your latest personal mess cause you don't know what I had to get away from just to get in the car drive cross town and walk in this church when I get to church I don't have time for games cause I just left a messy situation and I need God to change my life Touch somebody and tell them, you don't know what I had to get away from this morning just to walk in new hope. The miracle is not that I got here. The miracle is what I was able to get away from. And there came a leper. That's point number one. Point number two, if you got a Bible, and there came a leper, point number two, and worshiped. If you got a Bible and can read it, text says, and there came a leper and worshiped. I'm going to try it again. Ball headed, torn clothes, sign on his on his chest got a shout unclean raw flesh showing spots on his skin but he showed up to worship all right okay uh you don't know how to appreciate this because uh you have to understand that when we read these stories in the synoptic gospels in order for us to get the most accurate interpretation of the story we've got to consider everybody's account the synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, we got to look at everybody's account and see if we getting a good grasp on what the point is. This is interesting, church. This is a sickness. So we need to consider Luke's account. <laughs> Y'all are Bible conscious, church. Luke was a physician. I, 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 like, I like what Luke said, church. Here's what Luke said. Luke did not say he was a leper. Luke 5 and 12, here's what it says. Luke says he was a man full of leprosy. I'm going to try it again for this side here. Uh, Matthew said he's a leper. Luke said he's a man full of leprosy. Okay, uh, uh, let me see if I can help you. Uh, you got to watch these Matthews in your life who don't know how to separate your illness from your individuality. And they identify you according to your problem. You, you got to watch people who know your business and they have degraded your dignity because they know your business. Don't look around the church. Look this way. Because you know folk who call you by your divorce. They call you by your sickness. They call you by your firing. They call you by your lost your ministry. Do I got anybody that will testify? I might have some issues, but I'm still an individual. You got to watch these Matthews in your life. Who, 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 who don't know how to separate the, your issue from your individuality. And I like what this man says to, in Matthew. He said, Matthew, I got you. You want to call me and identify me by my issue. But I'm still showing up to worship. <laughs> 
They don't know how to get happy. Okay. I don't care what you know about me. I'm still coming to church. I'm still going to serve on the ministry. As a matter of fact, I know you've been talking about me, so I'm going to come in church and sit right next to you. I'm going to sit. I want you to know that I am unbothered by what you put out on me. And I could care less if it's true or false. I'm still going to give him glory. Because I made up in my mind that I will let nothing separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Do I got 20 people here? I'll make number 21 who testify come what may I'm still showing up to worship. Ball headed, I'm a worship. Clothes torn, I'm a worship. Sign on my chest, I'm a worship. Skin ain't doing well, I'm gonna worship. Let me aggravate your theology. Here's, here's what text tells us, y'all. Uh, uh, Co-Pastor Cooper, it tells us that worship did not stop his wounds. But he made up in his mind since worship is not going to stop my wounds, I'm not going to let my wounds stop my worship. And I could care less what people say or see. I thought I had somebody get here that would thank God. You still managed to show up to worship come what may. As a matter of fact, we don't know if you mean I will bless the Lord at all times until there are times when there's excuses that you could throw in the place. But you tell yourself, I'm going to give God glory despite my public pain. And despite my personal discomfort. Point number one, and there came a leper. Point number two, and worshiped. Point number three, he says to Jesus, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Apparently, you forgot that Matthew wants to pitch and posture our Lord as the chief politician in the office of a king. All right. uh -huh. And when you approach a king, there's certain protocol. All right. All right. All right. You got Bible? He says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. The proper protocol, if you notice, he did not make his petition known before worship. He didn't come in church with his hand out saying, Lord, give me. He came in church with his hand up saying, Lord, you're worthy. Though I got some needs, you don't approach a king by making your requests first. When you come into the presence of a king, you pay homage first and bow and worship because proper protocol is to honor the king before you make your petition. Uh, what would worship be at New Hope if all of us decided to worship together instead of looking at God like God I ain't going to worship you till you do what I need you to do I'm not going to give you glory till you do it no if you got real honor for the king you don't make your petition known first you give him glory first and then watch me he already knows what you have need of before you ask it He gives homage first, then makes his request known. He says, Lord, a term of authority, if you will, that's possibility. You can make me clean. That's certainty. I'll try it again because you missed it. Lord, that's authority. If you will. 
if is a term of possibility. You can make me clean. That's certainty. I'm going to try it again. Lord, that's homage and authority. If you will, that's possibility. You can make me clean. That's a term of certainty. It somehow suggests, uh, Bishop Cooper, that when he gets to you can, that he is sure that healing is a reality because the report has gotten back to him that Jesus has healed somebody else. I'm not struggling with your ability. I know you can do it. I just want to know if you will. Okay. Can I translate it for y'all? Y'all ready? Here's what he was saying to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I know you can do this. I just want to know, am I next? Lord have mercy today. I done seen you heal somebody last week. I want to know when is it my turn. I done seen you open doors for somebody. I want to know when is it my turn. I've seen you elevate people. I want to know am I next on your list. He puts himself on the pendulum between possibility and certainty. Isn't that what faith is y'all? is putting yourself on the swing between possibility and certainty. I'm not sure how you're going to do it because I know you can. I just want to know, am I next on your list? Is that anybody's petition in here? Because some of y'all have already got your blessing, so you don't know how to receive this word. But I want to talk to about 15 of y'all. I'll make number 16. I'm trying to figure out, God, when is it my turn? When are you going to bless me? When are you going to do what I've seen you do with other people? people I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand and tell them neighbor you really need to catch this next point tell them you really need to catch this next point ball headed sign on his chest torn clothes raw flesh showing Weak in his body, he says to Jesus, Jesus, I don't know if I'm next on your list, but I'm next on my own list. I'm going to show it to you in the text. How do you know when you're next? Tell your neighbor, you got to catch this. If you miss this, I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm next on your list, but I'm going to make myself next. Watch this, y'all. Because when he approached Jesus, he got in front of Jesus. Because people who are next don't run in crowds. Y'all missed it. Matthew 8 and 1 says that when Jesus came down off that mountain, a multitude followed him. And the man with leprosy says, I'm not getting in that crowd because people who in crowds don't run with crowds. People who are next get in front of the crowd. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, excuse me, I might offend you this morning, but I'm next on my own list. I might not keep sitting here on this pew because I ain't running with crowds because people who are next don't run with crowds. They in front of the crowd. Tap somebody tell them, I'm going to make myself next. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care how you talk about me. I don't care if I get on your nerves. I don't care if I get in your way. I'm next on my own list. Because if Jesus decides to heal, I want to be the first one there. If he decides to bless, I want to be the first one there. That's God's word for some of you who are addicted to approval.
Because when you're addicted to approval, you want a crowd to affirm you. I can't get no help here. But when you next on your own list, you don't run with crowds. You can stand by yourself, eat by yourself, pray by yourself, worship by yourself, and be by yourself. Do I got any next people in the room who have made up in your mind, I got next. However way God wants to bless me, I'm going to be the first person in line. And if I'm not next, I'm going to celebrate who is next so that I can be somewhere near standing by them. Here comes the theological tension of the text. Point number one. And there came a leper. Point number two, and worship. Point number three, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Point number four, Jesus says, I will be thou clean. But that isn't the whole of the text. If you got a Bible and can actually read it, here's what it actually says, Bishop. And he touched him saying, I will be thou clean. Y'all read it too fast. I'm going to try it again. And he touched him saying, I will be thou clean. Here comes the theological tension, church. When we read this text, the talking and the touching happen simultaneously. And therefore, the question is, which one of them, oh, have mercy. <laughs> which one of them cleansed the man? <clears throat> Did his hand cleanse him? Or did his word? I thought y'all could read the Bible in New Mexico. And he touched him saying, which suggests that the touching and the talking happen simultaneously now because Jesus is God he had no need to touch him because <laughs> he is accustomed to creating and making anything by his voice the culprit of creation was his voice he spoke and said let there be I, I thought I had some Bible folk around here. And it was. When we read the synoptic stories, y'all, Mark clears this up for us. Mark says in Mark 1 and 42, he says, and after he had spoken, the man's leprosy was immediately cleansed. So Mark wants to make it clear. It wasn't his hand. It was his word. Well, if that's the case, what did you touch him for? Tap your neighbor and tell neighbor, you got to get this. Because Bishop, if Jesus touched him, then Jesus is going to contract leprosy. That's the reason why he touched him. Because I need to transfer what you going to die from on to me so that I'll die and you'll live. Y'all so slow. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why he touching you is because he transferred all your sin off of you onto him because he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a transfer. You won't have to die. I'm going to die so you can live so Jesus became unclean which qualified him to bear the sins of humanity 
so that he would die and you and I would live. Y'all must don't like the gospel. I shout myself off the gospel because everything I was supposed to die from was transferred on to him so that he would die and I would live. Which causes us to pitch our tent here and teach us a lesson about friendship. Because your real friends are people who make a decision to make contact with you when they know it's going to hurt them. Your friendship list just dropped. Because many of you got friends that are friends based on comfortability and carnality. But when you get in trouble, you can't find them. A real friend sticks closer than a brother. A real friend will run in when everybody else runs out. And he says, greater love have no man than this. That I lay down my life for my friend. I touched him because I cared for him, but my word cured him as a sign that there's been a transfer. I'm done, church. Thank y'all for letting me share this little Easter speech. <laughs> Let me see if I can find my exit. Thank you, Bishop, for letting me share. There's one little matter left here. Jesus told this man, now that you've been cleansed, don't tell nobody. Now I'm slow, so y'all got to help me. How is this man supposed to hide that his hair is growing back? How is he supposed to hide that his skin is healing? How is he supposed to hide that he's no longer having to wear that sign on his chest? How is he supposed to keep it a secret? That Jesus has healed him. Well, if y'all read the Bible, uh, Mark and Matthew tell us that he didn't even try to obey Jesus. He went and told all of it in the Albuquerque newspaper. He put it on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Check me out. See my hair growing back? He didn't even try to obey Jesus. Jesus told him to go show himself to the priest that there may be a testimony. That word testimony suggests in its historical context, there had not been a miraculous healing of leprosy in over 1,500 years. And when he goes to go to the priest, he wants to show, God wants him to say to the priest, tell the preacher that I'm moving again in the community. That the preacher may have evidence, Lord have mercy, that I'm back moving amongst my people. And the healing of leprosy is a sign that I'm back moving against my people. I thought I had 20 of y'all that would be evidence and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm evidence that God is back moving in the people. He didn't obey. He told everybody. Here comes the real miracle, y'all. If you missed this, I'm sorry. He did the very thing that brought on leprosy. Disobedience to God. But here's the blessing. We have no record that he contracted leprosy again. Okay. The real miracle, y'all, is not that you got your miracle. The real miracle is God let you keep it after you disobeyed him. 
God have mercy. I want to talk to the real people. I ain't talking to all of y'all who testify. You got a new car and drove it to places you didn't have no business going after you got it. You got a new house and did some stuff in the house you didn't have no business doing after you got it. But God still lets you keep your car. He still lets you keep your house. He still lets you keep your right mind. Tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, God let me keep my miracle even after I disobeyed him. That neighbor didn't get happy. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, excuse me, because I'm starting to think about some stuff God blessed me with that I should have lost already. Ooh, but God let me keep my miracle have I got myself a witness in this place grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him neighbor I still got my miracle have I got myself a witness here grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him neighbor Lord thankful he could have took it back but he let me keep it he could have took my healing back but he let me keep it he could have took my blessing back yeah but he let me keep it Y'all still sitting on me there Let me find somebody That's thankful That after all You've been through You still Got your blessing Do I got anybody here That's ready to give him praise now And if you got it Just tell somebody Neighbor I'm next even if I'm not next on your list because I have made myself one that won't run with the crowd but if Jesus decides to stretch his hand forth and touch somebody I want him to touch me if Jesus Jesus decides to heal somebody. I want him to heal me. Move your neighbor out the way and tell him, neighbor, excuse me while I get in the crowd and get away from the crowd. Somebody in here has made yourself next. Well, here's the good news. If you decide to make yourself next, Jesus just may turn around and look at you and says, I will be thou clean if you decide to step out of your pew and step in the aisle and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I got to be next now. Jesus may decide to look back at you and say, I will be thou clean anybody here thankful that he'll clean you up can I ask you a question what can wash Lord away my sins oh yes sir nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again yeah But the blood of Jesus, it'll make you white as snow. Has he cleansed anybody? You've been cleansed by the blood. Well, if you've been cleansed, can I tell you how you've been cleansed? Jesus came from a high place and stepped down in between God and cursed humanity and hung on a cross and hung there for six hours one Friday went to hell preached a revival and three days later he came out of the grave with all power in his hand but he didn't take the power 
all by himself. 50 days later, he poured out the Holy Ghost. Do I got anybody here that's got the Holy Ghost? And the Holy Ghost will give you the power to show somebody that you are a testimony that God is still working. Good night, New Hope. May the Lord God bless you real good. But go find three people that's not sitting next to you and just go show them you are evidence that God is still moving. You are evidence that God is still blessing. Go show them you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. I feel like preaching here. Anybody in here made up in your mind? I am a living testimony. I didn't make it on my own. I'm not standing here alone. But if it had not been, yeah. Lord, who was on my side, where would I be? Tell somebody, neighbor, excuse me now, I gotta give him glory. Now let everything, I said let everything, I said let everything that's got breath, give him praise. Tap your neighbor and tell him neighbor, I got five reasons why you ought to give him glory. Reason number one, he woke you up this morning. Reason number two, he woke you up this morning. Reason number three, he woke you up this morning. Reason number four, he woke you up this morning. Reason number five, he woke you up. Now let everything, I said let everything. Everything that got up, praise up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta quit as I render this mic to Bishop I need you to do me one favor I need you to posture yourself as a prophet of God and go find four people and just tell them neighbor you next I need you to speak that into somebody's life tell them you next tell them you next Come on, tell them you're next. 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 The next blessing coming your way. The next healing coming your way. Now praise him. I said praise. 